I'm William Mendes. Uh, I'm a software developer at Coldmira. Uh, I work with, with these two guys, um, rocking some Python stuff. And we'll talk, we will be talking about uh, how to improve your Django applications after you start like receiving uh, big traffic and uh, you, you don't want to invest in more resources like uh, new servers and stuff. So how you, you, you can uh, improve how the, the database is working, how, you, uh, how your, your service res responds to, to the requests. So, I'm oh, sorry. So this is uh, basically the, the most critical things that we can work on. Uh, as I said, the first thing is, is almost always the database, slow queries or uh, making too many queries, slow Python code like uh, uh, but the by use of uh, data structures or algorithms that don't perform well or uh, they are pretty bad, um, how to catch our views, our templates, and our functions. Uh, we will talk about, uh, well, templates, it's, it's uh, um, how you build your application is, is very critical, how you uh, place your assets uh, and how you, you, how you use your template tags in Django that are a very powerful thing, but uh, if you abuse of them, uh, you, you'll probably have some issues. And also, um, working with a sync task, email, how to, to send emails and how to refresh, refresh catch, uh, like in background, uh, um, in parallel to other things that are happening in the system. Um, but we'll be focusing more on slow queries and, and this kind of stuff that is basically uh, what, what you will see uh, the most impact, like uh, very quick. So there are many tools that you can use like to, to, to um, understand what's happening um, on your uh, system. And the first thing to do is basically you use your, your, your browser developer tools, uh, that is uh, Chrome developer tools or uh, Firefox, whatever. All, all, almost all the browsers have uh, something that you can at least see what's the response time for, for the server, uh, how many resources are you downloading, uh, how large is your site, etc. cetera. Uh, Django toolbar, it's, uh, it's basically the the, the most uh, used uh, tool for, for, for the purpose. And uh, this is the one that, that we'll be using and, and we'll show. Django Silk is another library that you can use to, uh, to profile um, functions, uh, database queries, uh, download time, et cetera. It's, it's very powerful because you can like uh, profile uh, isolated stuff like a, like a view, a single function, or, or a, a block of code. Um, and of course, you can use the, the uh, built-in uh, Python profiler. You can use the, the built-in Python profiler, which is uh, very powerful. So, um, for the purpose of the talk, I created a, a, a simple blog uh, that will have categories, uh, tags, um, the post with uh, a couple of fields, uh, and the comments. And it looks something like this. You know, it's working on my designing skills, but we're getting there. Um, when we, when, for, for the purpose of, of, of this, I populated a database with about uh, 10,000 posts, uh, about 300 uh, users, and each post having a couple of comments and stuff. And this list uh, is showing 25 uh, items. So when you request that page, the first thing you see is, well, you see nothing because you have to, to, to wait six seconds until the page uh, loads in my machine. And then you see that I'm making uh, 300 uh, queries. So that's a lot for, for a, a very simple blog. 
So this is uh, this is what what I'm doing uh, to list of, of all the uh, the posts, and this is the the portion of the code that the, the template that displays the the list, and you can see here the first thing is that I'm uh, displaying the the category. So what what's happening here is that this category uh, it will try to to display the the string representation of the category, not not the ID. So uh, Django is making a new query because it doesn't have this information. So for each post, it, it will make an, a new query to get the category. It will also make a new query to make the, to to get the the username, the author, and it will also make a new query to count all the all the comments that this post uh, has, and we also make another query to get all the ta the tags associated to 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 this post. So that's why you saw like for 20, 25 items that that I'm showing, it, it's making about a hundred queries because twenty five and uh, Four more queries to get the other other information. So this is basically uh, how how I am displaying the the sidebar that that you saw before. Let's see. Uh, yeah. So we have a feature post, popular post, and in a tree in a category tree that that will display all the 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 complete tree. So. Uh, that's what I, what I'm doing. I'm, I'm using a couple of uh, template tags. Uh, this is a little hack I, I made. Uh, that's in the code. You can look at uh, at the code later. Uh, not important now. And uh, popular posts and and the category tree. So uh, this is what I was uh, telling you about uh, before of the. Uh, 306 queries, 300 of them are duplicated. I mean, for each category, it's making another query. For each user, it's making another query. For each uh, post comment, it's making another query. And for the tax, too. So the idea is that we can prevent that uh, using, for the, for the author and, and the category that, that are, are foreign keys, we can use the feature that Django uh, provides us MSA list related that will automatically make a join uh, in, in the database for those two tables. So you, you don't have to uh, make another query for, for each item. And we have the prefer, oh, and you can, uh, the select related can be either here or apply a filter after that or, or whatever. It, it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. The prefetch related one is the one that you use for for, for uh, many to many relations, or uh, in this case, that the comment, it, the the post is a is a foreign key in in the comment table. So you pref you say, you apply prefetch related, and it will make an extra join uh, fetching all that data. But you uh, you will you won't have like a, a tons of, of uh, more queries. So, uh, and in, there is one thing that you have to be careful about, and is that prefetch related. If you apply a filter after that, and then then the catch will go away. So uh, you have to be careful uh, using this because uh, in the worst in the worst case you you will you won't see the results, but uh, sometimes you, you you can like uh, 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 have a, a hard time trying to. To understand what's happening and why why this is not working, and and sometimes that's the case, and then I I'm, I'm filtering the all the cases that are approved basically, and ordering by date. The probably wrong, but should be descending. But so after applying that, um, we went from a hundred and uh, three hundred and six queries to two hundred and Eight queries, and the CPU time from 4.5 seconds to to three seconds, and the response time overall uh, less than five seconds. So 
it's a it's a great improvement uh, when when you are having like high traffic, you know. But uh, there are other things that we can do. Um, for example, I uh, created a couple of uh, indexes for the approved um, post and the and the featured post. And uh, this is what's happening. Before the indexes, uh, we had that the query plan that the database uh, understood that was the best thing to do was uh, to make a sequential, sequential scan on the database. That means that the, um, the result was like, uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, uh, only five posts. And it filtered through uh, almost 4K posts. That means that it will have to, it had to like sequentially scan all the, the all the rows of that table uh, to filter all uh, that data. But when you index, when when you set an index uh, on that kind of uh, fields, what's happening is that you are not doing a sequential scan. You're you're looking into into an index table that that uh, the database creates um, for this kind of uh, stuff. So it's really a good idea that if you're working on, on these kind of things, uh, you, you, you spend some time trying to understand what the database does. Uh, uh, so don't, don't always rely only on what Django does, because Django does a lot of cool things, but you know it has a cost. But uh, if you see here, the, the time for this query was basically the same or maybe worse. Yeah, it was actually worse, but uh, that's because I'm just looking uh, into a, a 4K uh, rows table. The important thing here is this. The planning time, that's the, the time that the database took to know what uh, query plan it will, it will it will take like what what approach I, I will take to to get the data was uh, a half of a millisecond, and before it was uh, quicker. But the execution time before was uh, one millisecond, and the execution time after adding the indexes was just uh, like twenty percent of, of the time. So if your data is a lot, if your table is a lot bigger you will see a really big impact on that because uh, you, you are like looking into an index table that it will be really fast. So let's talk about a little, uh, a little about uh, cache, queues, and, and, and Redis. So the cache is something uh, very powerful, but it's, it's, it's a little bit, uh, it, it has its gotchas. So we'll talk about that and how to, uh, I, I'm, I'm using a library that is uh, called uh, Django Redis uh, for this and a library that is called uh, Django RQ uh, to, to create queues. You can use uh, Celery if, you're, if your app needs uh, something more powerful like handling a lot of, uh, of asynchronous stuff and a lot of data. But for very simple stuff, you can use uh, uh, Redis and, and, and Django RQ. And we are, we are also catching, uh, using the session, uh, starting the session in, in our catch, which is Redis. Um, Django recommends in, in, in the documentation, recommends that, that you use memcache. But the, the reality is that memcache is uh, like getting outdated. Uh, pretty quick. Uh, the development on 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 that uh, project is is very slow, and and Redis does a lot more things that uh, Memcache, so you can use uh, for everything Memcache now. Uh, sorry, Redis. And so uh, to demonstrate this part, uh, I'm using I'm listing here in a in a authors page all the authors and all the all the posts. In a simple way, just like we use we we did uh, with the post and and the tasks and stuff. So I have like uh, 300 or so users or 500. I, I don't know, don't remember. But 
every time you count, you are making the same thing that we were making uh, in the previous slide, in the previous uh, example of the post. So this is the result, 500 queries. Uh, but you can catch W, like uh, you apply a catch to the whole view, and uh, that's the result. You you will make two calls to to the catch and zero queries because this page is is an static page. You probably don't need to refresh that uh, that page very often, so you will specify how uh, how much time you want the page to be to be in catch, and it will catch it. And the next time that you request the the page, if it's not in the catch, it will bring the page and catch it for the next user. So that's how you like uh, can avoid 500 queries uh, catching the whole view, but that that has a little problem. If you're like uh, let's say your 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 application is not a it's not a blog it's a a shopping cart, you probably you are probably going to show uh, information from another user to to someone that doesn't need to to know you know uh, all, the, all all your stuff so. It's uh, you have to be very careful when when you catch uh, a whole view. So the idea is uh, that you can do um, template fragment catching. So in Django, you can you can catch just uh, a a portion of of, uh, of a template, and you know it will work. Uh, and I did the same for uh, the feature post and popular post and and everything. And for uh, the category trick uh, um, that I showed before. That this is the, the the very bad code that I wrote for that. Uh, it's basically looking into all the all all the parent categories and then uh, building a tree with this function. Uh, and that's really really slow. But we can catch that thing. Uh, like in this case. I didn't catch the the root categories, so I just only catch like the the tree underneath the 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 parent. So the idea is that you can catch whatever you want. Just just set a, a key and the data that uh, can uh, should be serializable, so it doesn't break. So you you can uh, you can. You, you have to you have to know what things you're you're gonna catch there, and uh, the result is this. Um, at the end, after catching uh, all the categories, what we have is this. Uh, before we we loaded the page in six seconds, and then we can uh, load it in less than two seconds. Um, we were making uh, 300 queries, and now we are making only two queries, and the catch we were we weren't hitting the catch, but now uh, we ma we made uh, 133 uh, calls, but it, it's only uh, 46 millisec milliseconds. Yeah, compared to these queries that were 353 milliseconds now to three milliseconds. So basically, uh, you do the math and, and you see that. Uh, the catch and all the stuff will will like uh, be a, a really benefit. So this is a piece of of code that it's on the documentation of of silks and and, and that's what I was talking about before that you can uh, profile how fast and, and how many calls and stuff a, a, a single function makes. Uh, so that's that's very useful when when you need like to to really dig into into the problems like it's, it's not just about a few queries and stuff um, and uh, this is how uh, Django RQ uh, works so whenever I create a new post comment I want to send an email to the user that wrote the, the, the comment and to the owner of the of the, of the blog so what I do is that I get the the queue that I want. I, I can have uh, several queues. Let's say um, a very low priority queue that I use for uh, I don't know refreshing background stuff, or I can use a 
a high priority queue that I know that it's like my, my most important thing and, and so on. So you, you can create a lot of queues. And when you have a, a, a job, oops, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> when you have a job uh, that you wanna enqueue, you, you just pass the function or a callable that you, I guess it's a function. Not, I don't remember, but yeah. Let's, let's assume that there is a function for now. And the, the parameters that the function receives. Uh, and these parameters, uh, uh, you, you have to make sure that they are serializable because if you pass like the instance, uh, if you're gonna if you if you wanna get the data, it, it probably will make the query anyway, or or it would it won't know how to uh, serialize a Django object. So because this is this is not a Django this is not a Django project per se. Is is based on 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 what RQ does. That that is another uh, Python project for for queues uh, adapted to Django. So, and this is how we use the function. Uh, we receive uh, the the post ID, the user ID, and the user email, and we just query the 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 post and the user. But uh, this this is gonna happen. In parallel, I mean, when you uh, submit the post, you will you will see the page loading, and and you and you won't be uh, you don't you didn't know that this stuff happens. In fact, you probably have thousands of, of things in the queue, and when is the moment for for the queue to send the email, it will send it. So that's that's will uh, will allow you to uh, put work that is. It's probably not not as important as rendering the page to to work on the background. Um, this is uh, very very useful because sometimes the the applications crash because uh, they are trying to reach another services. Like let's say you want to send th these emails are being sent from uh, Mailgun or another server, but the service is timing out. Uh, what do you do? You will you will crash everything, and the post won't, uh, the comment won't won't get to the database because you couldn't send an email to to the user say, saying that your comment was accepted. Uh, that's probably not what you want. Uh, the same case if you have a, like a shopping cart or something. Uh, the priority your priority probably is, is not sending the email that says to the customer that that your order was placed, but placing the order. Uh, per se, so uh, this is uh, very very useful stuff. Um, I, ha I have used this uh, also when I'm receiving a lot of data from another sources, and I have to pre-process the, the data. I won't crash the server just processing the data. I will send this to to the queue and and process the 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 data later. And if it's, if it's not critical, like having it uh, real time. Uh, it is just better to throw it in a queue and and, and work with that later. Um, other things that you should consider when working with Python it, with Django is uh, remember you can write row queries. You can you can really uh, uh, get if if you don't know how to like uh, build a, a really complex query with with the with the ORM you can. You can always go here and, and write your stuff. Uh, you can invest some time uh, in learning your DV engines. For example, uh, a lot of people ha that that is been working with Django doesn't know how to tweak uh, the anything in, in, in Postgres. Uh, they don't know how the the query plan works. They don't know how the indexes work. They don't know, uh, for example, uh, that there are things like uh, window functions that you probably uh, will take a lot of advantage of, and you don't have to. Uh, the, the the work that the database does, you don't have to uh, bring it to Python. So let the database uh, do do its thing. That is, uh, you, you will be impressed uh, of the things that you can do just with the database. So when you can, you you please use it. Uh, learn how to 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 tune your your database. 
This is uh, very important. Uh, you have to take care of your middlewares because Django has this uh, very useful thing that you can, uh, before, the, uh, before and after the, the every request is processed, you can do stuff like insert variables, look for things, and this is uh, very useful because you can pass that in the context of your application and, and, and use it whatever you, uh, however you want, but this has to, to run every time that you make a request. It doesn't matter if it's a synchronous request, if it's a AJAX request, if whatever it is, this always will run. So the code that you have there, uh, you have to try to be uh, as critical and, and focused as you can, because that's, that's probably one of the things that will slow you down. Uh, custom uh, authentication model. So in Django, you can use the default, the default user model, or you can specify a user model that you create, that you extend, or whatever you want to do, uh, like create a, a new model, a complete new model. So you can, so that way you can uh, avoid to ha uh, to to create, uh, avoid having another table with additional information for 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 that user, like. Uh, Let's say Django doesn't have um, uh, height uh, or, or, or weight of a person, but you, you want to use that, that model for, for that. Uh, you want to use those fields for, for your model. It's probably, depending on how much, how often you query the, the user, that, those fields, it's probably better you move that into a custom user and, and you don't have to make those joints or extra, or extra queries as we, we saw at the beginning. Because uh, you probably can uh, use prefetch related or select related everywhere, but you will, you will, sometimes you will, you will miss it. So it's better to, to have it. And, you know, this thing that is like the only thing now, <laughs> uh, it, if you can render uh, a lot of your uh, a lot of your your GUI, your GUI uh, with these tools, uh, you, you probably should do it because that's um, that that will make like your response time uh, uh, a lot a lot shorter. So that's it. If you have any questions? Yeah, you can you can you can set if by dynamic you mean that. Let me see. What is it? Okay, I miss it. That's not it. Um, in this case, uh, I'm catching the. Um, the post here um, for uh, 100 seconds, and here for 30 seconds. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, but actually, the the catch doesn't refresh itself. Uh, if you uh, if you, if that piece of uh, of the the template is not is not in the catch, and you don't make a request for a hundred years, it will it will remain that way. So the next time that you make a request, it will it will uh, catch that piece. So uh, the thing is that. You also have to be careful with, with the cache because uh, sometimes you want to catch it all. 
And that's not the answer. Because at some point, the cache has to be refreshed. And you don't know if that moment will, will throw, throw down your, your, your whole system. You know. Um, but do you mean something like uh, that the cache changes dynamically in another way? Uh, okay. Yeah, because you, you can like, uh, in Django, you can uh, actually render that piece of code with, uh, a fun with a couple of function calls. So you, you can decide that internally when, uh, uh, when, when something happens that you want the cache to be uh, refreshed uh, automatically, you can just re-render that. Remember that this is a key in the cache. Uh, this is a key that basically we're using a, a key value uh, database. This is the key that, uh, of, of, the, of what is being cached and when, when you request it or, you're up, you, or you update it, that's the content that, that, that we'll, we will return, so. I haven't used Jinja yet, but uh, I, I haven't used Jinja, but, but, it, but it's very similar, yeah. Well, that depends on a lot of things, because, for example, uh, we at Colmira ha have a, a, a customer, a client that he sometimes prefer, prefers like using Django pages because of the SEO and stuff. Because uh, rendering stuff uh, asynchronously is still kind of difficult for Google to, you know, to have you on top. But um, it's 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 a very different thing. Uh, it will perform. You will see that the thing perform. Uh, it, it's like a perception sometimes, because uh, now it's your your browser that is uh, rendering the stuff that you uh, wanted to, to, to render on the background. But that depends on how well you handle that front end too. Because you probably are uh, freeing the server of a lot of things, but if you, do, if you don't do it well, then you will crash probably the, the, the application on the front end. So um, that, that, that's something. Here is uh, uh, everything is a trade-off, you know, so you have to, uh, you have to to like to know uh, when to use one thing and when when not to use it, and if you have the the resources to actually move all the things that you can really really easily do uh, with Django, if you can move it to to React or Angular or something like that, you should do it. You know, so that that's a trade-off. Anyone else? Cool.